euthanasia is given or asked for by either the patient or the relatives because the person has, is having a disease process which unfortunately is not killing the patient is letting the patient live and live for a long time which becomes a financial strain for the institution for the patient and the relatives that is the situation when they ask for euthanasia I think Supreme Court has done a fairly good job, a difficult uh, topic. Um, I think uh, I have read it carefully and I find uh, that uh, the court has uh, uh, displayed a rare sensitivity uh, to the basic issue of uh, sanctity of life uh, good that uh, it's one of those uh, good judgments of the apex court yet there are several who want to further this issue and elucidate the need for a law supporting active euthanasia in india advocating this cause fervently about 265 kilometers from bangalore in davangere recites kariba samma a 67 year old retired school teacher slip disk iga 10 12 varsha kelige nanu bangalore nalli magal mane gidde avag slip disk aitu avaru torsidralle anek janda hatra torsidra adu vaasha alilla malleshwar nanu srinivas doctor anta idare famous doctor avaru torsidra anek varsha gandile alli treatment tagonde eshtu severe pain andre yade mel tatte ittkondu uta madbeku ashtu pain bantu nanige aga ನನಗೆ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬ ನನಗೆ ಬೇಕಾಯಿತು ಆವಾಗ ಆಗ ಸ್ವಂತ ಅನುಭವ ಅಲ್ಲಿಲ್ಲಿ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ಗಮನ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾವಾಗ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಂತ ಅನುಭವಿಸಿದ್ನೋ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಜನ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ತಾವು ನೋವು ಯಾತನೆ ಹಿಂಸೆ ತಡಿಲಾರದೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣ ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಆಗ ನನಗೆ ಈ ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಲೇಖನಗಳನ್ನು ಬರೆಯೋಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದೆ ದಾವಣಗೆರೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ಅದನ್ನ ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಬರೆಯೋದಷ್ಟೇ ಬರದೆ ನಾನು ನೋವು ಯಾತನೆ ಒಳಗೆ ಆಗ ಒಂದು ಹುಡುಗ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಪೇಪರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದ ರಾಜೇಶ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಆ ಹುಡುಗನ ಕರೆದು ನಾನು ಕೊಟ್ಟೆ ಇದನ್ನು ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಇದನ್ನ ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನಾನು ಬರೆದಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಇದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜನರಿಗೆ ಇದು ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಬೇಕು ಇದು ಏನು ಎಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಬೇಕು ನೀನು ನೋಡು ಅಂದೆ ಅವನ ಕೈಲಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟೆ ಅವನು ಲೋಕಲ್ ಪೇಪರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಕಟಣೆ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಆಗ ಜನರಿಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯಿತು ಲೋಕಲ್ ಪೇಪರ್ನ ಇತರೆ ಪೇಪರ್ಗಳಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯಿತು ಮೀಡಿಯಾದವ್ರಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯಿತು ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಂದರೂ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾಹಿತಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ನಿಂತು ಹೋಯ್ತು ಅದು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಇದೇನಿದು ಹೀಗೆ ನಿಂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಯ್ತಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಮತ್ತೆ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾನು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ಹೇಳಬೇಕಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಪೇಪರ್ನವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ನಾನು ಮತ್ತೆ ಪೇಪರ್ನ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಅವರು ಹಗಲೆಲ್ಲ ಏನು ಅಜ್ಜಿ ಇದನ್ನು ಹಾಕೋದು ಸತ್ ವಿಚಾರನ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ತಮಾಷೆ ಮಾಡೋಕೆ ಹತ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಆಗ ನಾನು ಗಲಾಟೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಇದು ಜನರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಬೇಕು ಇದು ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಈ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಪೇಪರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಬಂತು ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಮರಣ ಅಂದರೆ ಏನು ಯಾಕೆ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ಈಗ ಅವಶ್ಯಕವಾಗಿ ಬೇಕಿದ್ದು ಇದು ಈ ಕಾನೂನು ಕರಿಬಾಸಮ್ಮ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಎಂಟಿಯೋರಿಂಗ್ ಹರ್ ಪೇನ್ ಅ ಲೋನ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನೋ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಬಾರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಹು ಸ್ಟೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಅದರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಸೈಕಾಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ದಟ್ ಟ್ರಾಮಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಆಫನ್ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಟಿಕಲ್ that families receive counseling and find adequate care and support system in each other if you ask me the impact of counseling it is more for the family than for the patient uh the person who is suffering from a terminally ill uh, uh, disorder or a disease uh tends to come and come to terms with this over a period of time there are certain stages and over a period of time they do come to terms but it's the family who finds it very difficult to come to terms with the fact that you know one amongst them is terminally ill so i would say that counseling uh, plays a greater role and has a greater impact on the family uh, which is very difficult it is not easy uh, because a counselor is after all a an outsider 
and uh, the usual response is you will not understand it only if you are a family you will understand which is very correct uh, any amount of empathy is not going to help them what kind of counseling would work here is more than uh, trying to make them understand or trying to make them accept it is better if we tell them what they can do the action part of it and that makes them feel better because they are in a position to actually do something see frustration is maximum when you are helpless when you cannot do anything so if a part of counseling focuses on what the family can actually do can actually give the person now uh, it does help the family because then their focus is on doing and not on you know just thinking about 4 years ago shabir was a bubbly teenager earning his living by working at a construction site but a mishap on the site has today left him incapacitated on a bed with despair and bed sores for company his father declared in a newspaper that he would either appeal for active euthanasia for his son or leave him behind in the hospital ek bar 1500 rupaye private mein leke jaake dikhane ke liye apni haisiyat nahi hai मैं एक दिन को 100 रुपए कमाने वाला लेवर और दो बाल बच्चे देखेंगे क्या इसको दिखाएंगे मेरा आशी लेके जाने के नहीं होता बोल के बोला बोलने के बाद नहीं तो जाहिर की इंग्लिश इन करके दे दो नहीं तो मैं ले जाके मेरे बेटे को रो के दो दिन का दुख का है मैं इसको दफना देता हूँ वो भी बोला अभी भी हमारे से आप पैसा तो है नहीं हमारे पास बिल्कुल हमारे से था इसके पीछे घर भी चले गया मेरा अभी क्या है रहे तो कपड़ा था वो भी कपड़ा भी अभी है ना बेच के और वह और का ना बर्तना धोने लगा के इसको फिर पालने के लिए होता हमारे से नहीं होता भाई साफ साफ बोल के हमने डॉक्टर को बोल वन ऑफ द फैक्टर्स दैट रॉस मोस्ट पर्सन टू ऑफ फॉर यूथ इन एशिया इज द फाइनेंशियल क्रंच अन अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ फंड फॉर प्रोलॉन्ग ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट मेक्स यूथ इन एशिया सीम लाइक अ मोर प्लॉसिबल ऑप्शन वाइल डायर सिचुएशन हैज पॉस्ट शबीर एंड इज फादर टू टेक इज रेडिकल स्टेप the health system in india is coming into the spotlight repeatedly for failing to help the needy the gap between the private and the public health system is looming large so the um, i would say if you had uh, just gone across to any of the government hospitals in forget about karnataka i would talk about bangalore 99% of the patients who go in there are not satisfied either the hospital is having a tie with the uh, the medicines are not available and they are asked to pick up the medicines from a private uh, uh, medical stores we have got i think some of the most uh, the oldest and the best public health systems on paper every time i review it i think we have such a beautiful system on paper but between corruption which is of course you know rampant and uh i would call it inattention to details on the ground that's where we fail so what happens is you've got a center that's making this wonderful policy but is completely dissociated from what is the result of that policy making and that's why as an institute we really state our stated aim is to bridge this gap and our research is relevant to what is on the ground so it can feed back into policy so this is this is really if if you ask me what are the three things we could do to improve the public health care the public care healthcare system i won't say is completely dead it exists and we don't see the kind of diarrhea epidemics that we saw in the past so there are there are many things that have happened but um in terms of access to curative care uh, to a good referral system so that you're not burdening your big hospitals with you know the uh, uh, child birth i mean they say now that women should not deliver at home i think it's ridiculous i really think it's ridiculous why we have moved away from the midwifery system and this thing whereas if you had good birthing places where you could link to a hospital in case of an emergency see that's the whole point of an urban setup that's the whole point of living close to each other right but our ambulances for example 108 excellent working very well but at half strength to run the needs of the city you need double the number of ambulances i've got this straight from from the authorities i mean i've talked to them and they say ma'am we're just waiting to scale up we're waiting to scale up but at the moment we're running at 50% and our staffing of all these hospitals and these centers again is very poor it's not just at the level of the doctors and the nurses 
One is we don't have enough A&Ms. Our A&M training schools have all died down. But we also have difficulty in appointing group B and group, I mean group C and group D staff. Which, mind you, I was horrified to hear, comes from the highest authorities. So you can't have an MO sitting somewhere and saying, look, let's, let's hire. So the particular center we are working with is not taking off. The structure has been there for two years, but it has not taken off as a maternity center because they can't hire group C, group D staff. So this is the state and all it needs is people who care. See, now more people, it's a fact that more people are going towards private corporate institutions for the treatment because they feel that the government institutions are not able to provide them the real medical care. These are the people who can afford treatment outside. Now what happens to the poor person? For him, the government hospitals are the ones where he goes for treatment. But is treatment sufficient or adequate in these places? I would say no. Not just because of the doctors or the institution. Because the government also has got a huge load. The population is so large. It's not possible to give everybody the full care that they can. Financially, the institution is suffering. The doctor, if he doesn't have the facility for investigation, what does he do? He says, go to that hospital and get it done. This fellow cannot afford it. So if the institutions are properly equipped, properly manned, has got all the medical facilities, then it's possible. But no, in India, especially in the rural setup, patient has to go miles to get a treatment and it's not possible that way. It's not all the primary health centers are well equipped also. So that's a, in India, the population being so much, it's not possible to look after and the government institutions are unfortunately not purposely, unfortunately, not able to maintain that standards which is came in in a private institution and a corporate institution. That's why more corporate institutions are doing better in uh, uh, civil now presently. But that's for those who can afford it. Uh, all of us are disappointed with the uh, healthcare when it comes to, uh, especially the poor in this country. Of course, we have five-star hospitals where uh, rich people can go. But even uh, this particular case you mentioned. It's a very helpless uh, situation. That is where I'll say, look, I will not support uh, mercy killing before because the parents or the, or the relatives have no uh, money to take care of that patient. That is where I say the state has to take over, step in. Money is not always the dominating factor in petitions filed by families for euthanasia. Very often, it is because of the lack of a support system and caregivers. In such situations, Hospice care always plays a crucial role. Kanashia is a hospice for the terminally and advanced cancer patients. We admit only cancer patients in the terminal stages. These patients are those who have undergone some form of treatment or they may not have taken any form of treatment. But as days go by, the condition progresses and finally, the doctors in the hospital or their homes tell them, look here now, uh, no more treatment is possible for you and you come to your final stages. And now all that you can go for is for palliative care. We advise you to take the patient home or sometimes they refer the patient for palliative care here. In palliative care, we don't treat the cancer because treatment modalities are over. All that we do is we treat the symptoms of malignancy like pain, nausea, vomiting, disorientation, restlessness, all aggravated by the disease process. So in palliative care, we look after this aspect, we look after bed sores, ulcers, wounds, we give them different modalities of uh, feeding, as a small, most of them may not be able to take food orally, we pass a tube through the nose, or you give them a feeding jejunostomy or a gastrostomy, we look after the bed sores, look after the ulcers, and make sure that these patients are at least looked after and they are peaceful towards the last stages of life, and finally one day, they die of the disease, but when they die of the disease, they die without pain or without suffering. As a proponent of palliative care, let me tell you that the demand for death that many times our patients make are primarily because of uncontrolled pain and insensitive sort of, or rather I would say neglect of the other issues that they have in terms of the emotional and the spiritual or whatever. So I believe that following the principles of good palliative care 
we will be able to significantly reduce the number of people who will be asking for euthanasia. No, right to life is always accompanied by this great thing called dignity. We are talking about a right to life with dignity. Life has no meaning if your dignity uh, is affected. And uh, in such a situation, uh, if you cannot have a dignified life anymore, for me, if I have to depend on my wife for my basic needs every day, it's not a dignified life for me anymore. And imagine her plight. And that's where I have absolutely no, uh, uh, no, uh, no uh, uh, doubts uh, or problem in taking a, a decision that uh, this is not the life that I, uh, I want to live. And I should be permitted to uh, finish it off. Euthanasia, we have to be very careful about it. If we make it legalized, then many people would be willing to knock off their relatives just like that. That might be one of the reasons why active euthanasia is not permitted by the government of India. And I agree totally with that. It should not be because here for 10 rupees people are willing to kill somebody and that should not be taken as a reason. Uh, as a country, are we ready for euthanasia? No. I would definitely not say so. Um, uh, euthanasia requires a lot of uh, thought of action. In this country where, uh, you know, even the legal system is more misused than used, I would definitely not vouch for euthanasia to be, you know, passed legally in this country. Uh, people will find ways of using it, you know, against anybody. Um, uh, you have, for example, you have now uh, cases of dowry harassment, you know, the woman being burnt. Now, happily, they'll go in for euthanasia. They'll find something or the other, they'll say she's suffering. You know, you can create suffering for people. You can... <laughs> so they'll create suffering and then they'll go in for euthanasia. So, um, no, I don't think as a country you know, we are ready at all. Life is not given by a human being. Okay, we are only co-creators of life. We can't give life to to the you know. They, though they uh, conducted a lot of experiments, they've made a cell. They've created a cell with everything, with the nucleus including. But they have not been able to give that life to the cell, right? So that energy. We are not able to give, so I don't think we have a right to take out. Something you cannot give, you cannot take. A consensus of opinion has to come between the patient, the relative, the institution, the government of India and the legal factors involved in this question of euthanasia.